Okay, Cy, this is yours. Which one is it? Uh, organizing effective, engaging editorial. Yeah, this was a topic that I wanted to bring up for discussion. At least from a personal standpoint, uh, the journals that I oversee either host an annual or biannual editorial and editorial advisory board meetings. So I guess I've seen a lot of interesting discussion on what an editorial advisory board comprises of. So I want to make it clear that at least for the journals that I oversee, we have an editors only closed session meeting and then we have an editorial advisory board meeting where you can also have the editors, but it's more open to the, to the entire board. Um, so I guess some of the questions that I had in mind maybe we can discuss is, first of all, when, where, and how? Meaning, when, by when I mean, how do you encourage more participation? We do make the events mandatory for all the editors to attend. So depending on the size of the editorial board, that's why we either have one meeting per year or two meetings per year so that if there's a bigger board, then they have two chances to attend at least one meeting per year. But do you think there's a strategy for tying up an editorial? First of all, when do you actually organize editorial board meetings? At ACS, we typically have uh, two national meetings in a year, and we kind of pair our editorial board meetings with these conferences so that when professors come to attend the national meeting, they can also attend the editorial board meetings. Uh, and also, there's a question of, do you host the editorial meeting domestic or do you take it international? So for example, one of the journals that I manage, uh, the editorial board actually has a substantial percentage of editors from China. So does it make sense to actually hold the editorial board meeting abroad rather than having it in the US? So that's one question. Uh, and the other big question that I often ask myself is, how do you actually hold these meetings in terms of the format? Do you have a presentation style format where you have the editor in chief presenting, you have your managing editor presenting, or do you hold a round table conference where you have ideas that you want to discuss and that's one way of increasing engagement from your editors rather than having just one person speak and everyone else fall asleep? So, sorry to keep talking about all these things, but um, we have quarterly editorial board calls for each of our journals, um, in addition to an uh, in-person meeting at our annual conference in December. Um, we drive the agendas because we do a lot of updates. There's, uh, we, we want the editors to know the status of the journal. These are submission numbers. This is our timeliness numbers. Um, these are the rejection rates. So it's important that they understand what's going on in the journal. Um, they can report trends in the science that they're seeing and things that we may need to do. We need to communicate updates to policies. So the easiest way to do that is to have these quarterly calls. And because we're international, it's not always easy to find a, a good time. Like you said, some people are in China, so you know, trying to find that 12-hour time difference from Washington, D.C. to China isn't always easy. Someone's either up very, very early or up very, very late. But um, it's been very, very successful um, so far. And how long do you typically have these calls for? It depends on the journal size. Um, some of our journals, we have about three editors. so. Um, those can go about an hour or so. Um, some have very, very large editorial boards, so those tend to go an hour and a half, um, people dropping off as their schedules mm -hmm. permit. Yeah, we, we have done this with our journals as well, where we kind of organize uh, multiple meetings covering the same content, but in different time zones, so that we can cover Europe in one time zone, China in one time zone, so that people are not waking up at 2 o'clock in the midnight for the meetings. <laughs> So we only have one journal has an editorial advisory board. That's our GeoHealth journal. Um, they meet separately because the advisory board is different. It's a discipline as opposed to the journal itself. So the journal editors, those activities are separate. And the advisory board meets on a separate schedule altogether. Anybody done a call with an editorial advisory board, so a larger board meeting through Skype or WebEx or some other company? 
Try Zoom. Zoom. Yes. Okay. Because Skype is not always summary. <laughs> I had a question for Sai. Um, so when you're repeating editorial meetings across different time zones, how do you bring in ideas from America into China and vice versa? Is it, is it like a rolling agenda? Or so do you have a section saying, well, this is what China discussed, and then America, you speak to that, and then Europe? the same and how does it work? Yeah, we actually ask the editors what they want to discuss the most. And by virtue of doing that, we get in ideas that are geography specific that we may not be thinking about as much because conditions may be different here. Okay. So we let them, we do a survey of what they want to talk about and then we find a unifying theme or, or a theme that is repeating across uh, multiple responses and try to stitch an agenda that covers as many topics as possible. Do you find there being much overlap then, or, or no overlap between the continents? There are, so actually this was one of my questions as well, is what do you actually cover in the agenda? Uh, one thing that I struggle with my meetings is, it tends to go down the rabbit hole of talking about statistics and general policies predominantly, whereas oftentimes I want to steer the direction towards journal strategy and thinking about uh, growth and what you want to publish, maybe like two years, three years down the lane. It's very hard to get into those discussions because people get um, very fixated on how many they're rejecting, uh, what kind of decisions they're making. That It's a very procedural type of discussion that it ends up to. Okay, this is uh, Patrick's idea of strategy driving the structure then, isn't it? Okay, cool, thank you. Yeah, yeah. So what I, I think what has worked, at least for my meetings is, that's why I asked a question about format. In the beginning when uh, we were doing a presentation style format where there were four of us doing presentations with the editor-in-chief, myself, and we have a deputy editor model as well, it became very focused on procedural um, discussions. So what we did was we said, okay, let's cut out all these statistics. We can hand it out uh, as a booklet prior to the meeting because the numbers are numbers. We can discuss, I think we can go all year discussing just the numbers. And instead, we had uh, roundtable discussions on topics that came out from the uh, editor survey as to what they want to discuss. And we broke them into smaller groups, thereby making sure that everyone kind of participates and also gives their opinion. Because not every editor speaks vocally. There, there, there are one or two of them that they have an opinion on everything, and they're going to talk about it no matter what. Uh, so when you have a roundtable format, it kind of gives an opportunity for to, uh, to other editors to talk about things that they may want to address. And it also kind of opens a discussion for other topics that may not have been captured in the survey responses or in the agenda as well. So mixing a presentation of maybe like 30 minutes plus having rest of the meeting as a roundtable has actually been really helpful. One way that we've um, handled it is is a similar, it's interesting, Sai, it's a similar uh, approach to parts of what you've said is to have, disseminate the stats beforehand so we don't really talk about it unless people have questions or unless we want to make a particular point and change course. Um, and we have brief presentation. But then the thing that we do rather than breaking out into roundtables, which is a really interesting idea we haven't tried, um, is that we present. So beforehand, we've worked with the editor-in-chief on the agenda and the more strategic questions around the content strategy for the journal and the growth trajectory that we want to engage the board on. And so we surface those questions without breaking the group up to the entire lot of them, um, but then use a mix of the managing editor and the editor-in-chief to sort of bring in people's views and get people talking about it, making sure to include the ones that we know tend to remain silent unless asked, because that's the other side of it, um, and, and also discussing in advance with our editor-in-chief who are those editors who are likely going to have an opinion that we've heard five times before and have discussed and you know so um we have that pre-meeting meeting with the editor-in-chief um we've had discussions around the agenda point and so we're 
we, with the other turn chief, know what the strategic questions are that we want to put to the board and, and what we want them to talk about and distill down to. And we found that to be an effective approach. I mean, you can't, you can't legislate for the conversation going down all sorts of routes, but at least if you plan in advance, then then you can try and have a, a united front with your editor in chief to sort of bring things back on track, come back to the agenda. Um, when we have the discussion, we have these questions just up on a slide, one question at a time, so that we can always bring the conversation back to. So let's just look back at the slide. The question we're asking is, um, can, can and you give examples of what the questions are that you ask? So, which which are the top three countries we should pick to grow article submissions from? Or, you know, th that, that sort of thing. Or um, uh, articles from these institutions have dropped off and that's interesting to us. What do we want to do about that? Why do we think that is? That sort of thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else from anybody? All right, let's move on.